Welcome back to the number one mixed martial arts show in all of Pakistan. We've been number one for five years and I just want to start this podcast by saying episode number 10, the 10th episode ever of this show was featuring a guy from Quetta who wanted to talk about, you know, his journey, his skills, his passion, his lack of recognition. He wanted to talk about how they don't have bags, they don't have mats. You guys can go look, look up that podcast right now. Um, he wanted to talk about mismanagement issues in his career. And today, in this episode, all that time later, we talked to the same man, but in a completely different stratosphere of existence, in a completely different universe of performance, of excellence, of martial arts, of victory, of all of these things. The biggest name in Pakistani combat sports today, ladies and gentlemen, Shahzeb King Rind. Shahzeb, brother, first and foremost, most important question always, how are you doing? Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm very good. Thank you for having me on your show again. Brother, I mean, it's absolutely insane the way things have been shaping up, everything, you know, in your career, all of that. But now the event that's coming up, Karate Combat 45, in my opinion, the single biggest event in the subcontinent's history. No promotion has gone taken this step before where they have three Pakistani fighters facing three high level Indian fighters in three fights in almost like a team system where there's a captain, there are three fights in total. Of course, we know one country is going to have to go away with a win. You're of course headlining that whole system. And then there's Luke Rockhold versus Joe Schilling that is headlining the entire card. How do you feel about all of this? How do you feel about this card and how are you feeling about your fight, about everything that's going to be happening on Karate Combat 45? Uh, yeah, I'm feeling very great. And in the beginning, when I came to the karate combat, it was my dream to, you know, uh, make more Pakistani fighters in karate combat. So when I started in last year, like April, it was my first fight in karate combat. So it was a lot of pressure on me to, you know, put uh, Pakistani, like show them Pakistani fighters are good. When I came here to America, the, uh, everyone says like, uh, we never hear about Pakistani fighters. They don't know like, uh, like, you know, about us. So I told them like, bro, we Pakistani fighters are good. They are very good. So it was on me like to show everyone like, you know, Pakistani fighters are something. So after that, I won my first fight. Then continuously, I did uh, my second fight. I won the second fight. And then I went to bare knuckle MMA. And everyone was like, everyone was telling me like, you are insane. You, in first your MMA fight and you're going uh, to fight in bare knuckle MMA. And it's like this sta stage of all, you know. Bare knuckle MMA is a um, dangerous sport in the world. So I went there, I knocked the guy out and he was 15 fights, 15 professional fights. I knocked him out and then again, uh, I fought in uh, Las Vegas. I knocked him out again. So currently now I'm three uh, knockout streak. So Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Uh, I got the chance. I got the opportunity. And now this is my goal to get more Pakistani fighters on the roster. So you see like we, now we already have like uh, two more fighters and uh, two more Pakistani fighters on the card. So more uh, more events and we will try to bring more Pakistani fighters. So it was my dream from beginning to till now. So Alhamdulillah, we are achieving it. That is absolutely incredible. And the reason I say it's incredible is because, like I said, you know, the whole intro I gave for this episode as well, in a way, it's like you are living proof in front of us that regardless of how things might be in a certain country, there is opportunity, there is a potential to, you know, and, and I know you're very humble about everything that's come your way. I know you're very grateful for it. And now you're adding to it by to the MMA community by getting more and more guys, these kinds of opportunities. <laughs> Excuse me. I really wanted to ask you, like, how are you feeling about your opponent in particular right now? Like, we, we'll come back to the whole Pakistani MMA, you know, that whole side of the thing and what it means for all of us, because it means a lot for Pakistani MMA, this whole card, this whole event. It is the biggest event, in my opinion, that we all should look, be looking forward to. But how do you feel about Rana Rudra? And uh, how do you feel about him as a fighter? How do you feel about him as an athlete? Uh, yeah, I feel very great. Uh, Rana Rudra is an uh, Indian like superstar. He he fought in Road to UFC two times. You know, he's the biggest name in India. So we, we were looking, my manager and the karate combat organization looking for good fighter against me, like, you know, because I'm, uh, Alhamdulillah, the undefeated fighter. So they were looking, they, there were a lot of fighters. So they reach out to everyone. So uh, I give credit to Rana. He accepted my fight and uh, it's it's going to be a good fight because he has a big name in India. I have a big name in Pakistan. So it's going to be good. 
I'm very excited for this one. Very candidly, want to ask you this. But I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready for everyone. Like you know, uh, for me, it's like I don't like see my opponents. I just work on myself. I'm working on myself. Like from the beginning to till now, I have improved a lot. Like every part of my game. Like uh, I see if I am like lacking in something, so I try to improve that thing and I train more. Like you know, more and more, give more time. So I'm improving on uh, all parts of my. uh like mma like you know striking ground game everything yeah i mean from your first karate combat uh fight you know like we could see you know the uh the sweeps uh, in a way you know like the the judo influence that i guess the goat shed system also had in terms of how you were able to adapt to you know certain situations in terms of like grappling but then now with especially the game bread fight you look so comfortable in there in just all aspects of the game but speaking of grappling rana is considered to be more of like a grappling heavy fighter in a lot of ways his style is considered to be more wrestling heavy in a lot were you surprised at all when he accepted this fight when he accepted to fight you in karate combat uh cuz you know for me it was like you know this this again i don't want to sit here and say he is an excellent fighter and i love indian fighters and i have complete respect for all people uh in india but in a lot of ways like were you surprised that he accepted this fight yeah look uh, it is a biggest opportunity nobody can deny this opportunity it's like in india it's in dubai you know uh, pakistan versus india the biggest fight of karate combat history and it's uh, the, uh, Uh, Salman Khan, the superstar of Indian, he's coming, and Pakistani actor Imran Abbas, and there are a lot of Pakistani like influences. They are like coming, so it's it's like big opportunity. No one can deny this one. And uh, Rana Rudra, he is like I I see his fights. He is like more like grappler, but karate combat. If you take karate combat rules, it's like not just striking. You know, we have ground and pound now. Now for uh, in karate combat, you can like uh, it's not like before. It was like only five seconds. Now it's like. till you finish the fight so it's like a uh, part of mma like you know it's similar i mean but you can't you can do grab uh, like uh, ground and pound everything but you can't choke yeah uh, yeah definitely that the rule change especially would make it an interesting fight now uh, but in terms of just skills like what do you think of his striking because this is predominantly still a striking heavy uh, you know system like how are you feeling in terms of how you guys are matching up for this fight is basically what i would want to ask Yeah, it's 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 good matchup, you know. It's good matchup, but I'm like, you know, uh, for me, it's like uh, whoever comes in front of me, my goal is to knock him out. Like, it, my last fight was like 14 seconds. I will try to knock this guy guy out in like five seconds. <laughs> Absolutely love that. That that is like in the 14 second knockout as well was just so. I mean. flash gone i mean that that fight was just so exciting like all of your fights are very exciting to watch uh and this event like you said a lot of eyeballs on it salman khan is going to be there how do you feel about that like about salman khan just really quickly being there because for us especially even in pakistan salman khan is one of the biggest names that you heard growing up in our generation like not just the biggest names like he was everyone knows who he is this, he's completely you know well known by everyone so how does that make you feel Uh, yeah it it makes me feel very good because from since childhood we were like watching his movies like you know watching him like everyone know him so it's good like in fight in front of him it's like big thing you know so i feel very good yeah so i'm very ready for this one yeah i can't wait for uh, april 20th yeah definitely how do you feel about um someone like alumi getting to be on this card as well i mean you talked about how it's really good for you know other pakistani guys to get into the karate combat roster but alumi in specific you know is like one of those guys who's been around for a while is a veteran of uh, pakistani mma in a way he's been doing this like for a very long time how did you feel when you got the news that alumi is going to be on kc45 yeah so my um, president asked me like who is the best fighter in pakistan so there were like few names that like that really come into my mind and i talked to him like you know lumi is the best guy and he told me like oh lumi he heard about him like so lumi is like big name you know everyone knows about him so uh, so it was my goal you know to get these guys like top like elite class like you know in mma pakistan mma community in pakistan like everyone knows them and they are like super good fighter so i told my coach like you know this guy is uh, the guy you have to like you know put him on the card so then he said okay then he so it's good it's good like i'm very happy and very excited to see him fighting in karate combat karate you know pants yeah <laughs> definitely and and those pants i actually wanted to ask you because i was speaking to uh, rizwan the other day uh, the third person on the card representing team pakistan and 
it just came up it was i just realized like i asked him have you been training in those pants how different are the pants compared to like mma shorts this is somebody from the outside looking in from a fight perspective flexibility wise like does it feel different yeah it feels different because in mma you are just uh, a fight on you know shorts so pants are a uh, little bit different so but you know if you train in the pants you can use to it and uh, in the sense of like uh, karate combat pit is like different you know it's like unique thing it's like this you know so everything is going to be different like pants and so if you are training in them so it's going to be but it's good it's cool you know uh it's good to fight in pants you feel more comfortable you know uh, this whole card i mean of course is being and the reason i said even before we started this interview that i feel like this is the event where everything is going to change and by that i mean like for pakistani mma in a lot of ways for indian mma this is the first time that a major promotion i know matrix fight night did the alumi dhruv fight uh but that was one fight this is like three very big names from each country coming in to a massive platform that again MFN is an all indian promotion this has luke rockhold and joe shilling at the top of the card i feel like it's going to really elevate things in, and i'm that's why i'm so excited for it because it benefits everyone in the community that this is getting to happen and it's just absolutely mind blowing from that perspective like is it setting in for you now that this is such a big card and i'm a part of it yeah uh, let me tell you about the kc45 card we have like um uh, uh Pakistan versus India fights three fights Pakistan versus India and then we have Muay Thai versus karate so very big names in Muay Thai and like big names Raymond Daniels of karate combat you know he's fighting and uh, uh, very big names in like Muay Thai you know they are fighting so it's going to be karate versus uh, Muay Thai and we have uh, in uh, main event you know UFC champion and and then we have grappling matches there are three grappling matches so it's like elite world class grapplers you know they are fighting so it's like big card like uh, everyone watching the world is watching it's not like just about middle east or just like about so karate combat is a organization it it views like all over the world you know so it's like uh, ufc fighters are watching like ufc like uh, joe rogan and everyone like you know everyone is watching karate combat so it's all about like worldwide uh, you know viewership so i'm very excited for this and uh, before my this fight uh, i i fought in uh, kc 43 uh, yeah it was 43 in las vegas so in las vegas we had like a roster full of ufc fighters you know under under my card there were like ufc fighters like big big names they were fighting in the uh, card and uh, uh, anthony petters uh, benson harrison they were like fighting in the same card so like now karate combat is changed it's not like just karate you know? it's like uh mma community is here and every like a lot of fighters are from ufc they are fighting black belt or pfl you know everyone is fighting so it's like uh, elite like world class organization yeah i mean karate combat has been great since it started but specifically i mean it, when we're on the subject asim zaidi has completely flipped everything on its head like he has done things which i mean because i i i i've been following the transition from you know him being just you know at goat shed and again an unstoppable team i don't talk about goat shed in a second because we talked about this last time as well i'm going to try to get the secret sauce out of you again ke bhai kya ho raha hai goat shed mein what is goat shed that they are the win loss ratio is incredible everyone's going out to different promotions and dominating there are fighters in the ufc that are coming up that I, in my opinion if they keep going like they will they will be champions but before that i mean asim zaidi came in he became president of karate combat and i remember looking at the videos when he announced a lot of people were really negative in the comments now when you see the work he's done kick back at rick ross's house that insane kick back in mexico and now a mega card yeah. in dubai i mean this guy has gotten pardon my language he's gotten shit done <laughs> so i mean being under the tutelage of that guy and seeing that progression for for him as well how amazing has it been for you to see how this promotion and how even his journey has been unfolding in front of you yeah when he started uh, asim zaidi when he started goat shed it was like almost like 3 4 years ago like you know when he started the goat shed nobody knew about goat shed now in goat shed we have like a lot of like ufc uh, champions they are coming to train at uh, goat shed you know so they finish their camps in goat shed and in goat shed it's like a different like atmosphere you know it's like all the time everyone is like screaming each other like you know it's like uh, everyone is like crazy and we do like uh, uh sparring like it's not like just small we are go like hard sparring you know 
every like in a week we do like three times uh three days like sparring and it's not like uh not like normal sparring it's like hard in the cage sparring so a lot of ufc fighters are coming uh to train with us and uh go shared level and ask him like uh the way asim teaches us like it's like high level super like his game is like super level you know he knows everything about grappling he knows a lot of things uh on the ground and striking so that's why everyone comes uh, like ufc fighter they just come for come to visit our gym and they see all oh, the skills the way of teaching and they just finish their training camps like you know in our gym so it's good we and we have a lot of uh, ufc fighter francisco he fought in uh ufc main card i was cornering him and we uh, did our training camp together so we have a lot of good fighters and asim when asim came to the become the president of uh karate combat in the beginning nobody knew like a lot of people do, only karate like guys they were there they knew about karate combat but now he changed everything and it's like less than you know less than a uh, less than a year I I don't think it's like 6 months you know less than 6 months it's first he was in Las Vegas so he did like only 3 and every card like is going up like you know it's crazy every card is like crossing uh, the views every time kickback kickback one was like super famous and it it got like 40 million views on only one platform you know so it's getting like very popular it's not just like karate community now it's like uh world you know it's a world a grappling community striking community and mma community and it's it's a very good to be part of this team you know i'm very happy alhamdulillah uh i'm i i came here now everything is changed we are like not the same gym you know it's like world class gym and we have president like everything is changed yeah things have been up and i mean you can see with each and every one of your fights as well like you've been so active you've been so dominant you've been so impressive like in terms of all of your victories i don't i don't remember ever seeing you in any kind of trouble in any fight uh and it's just you know very evident that everyone who comes out of goatshed is so well versed in every aspect of the game but also like the marketing the ability to make yourself interesting the ability to make yourself relevant all of which plays a part into making someone a superstar being good at fighting from what i've learned at least and correct me if i'm wrong being good at fighting is obviously something you need to have as a fighter if you want to make it but to get to that next level you need to kind of be comfortable in being in front of a camera being on a microphone how's that journey been for you learning those ropes so to speak yeah uh as a fighter like you know you have to be a good fighter like but still like there are a lot of things like a professional fighter is all about making money you know it's like business so he he's not going to invest in you if you are not good you know you can't talk you can't like you know you can't market yourself it's everything in america especially here like if you take ufc like there are guys like uh, they are like they are not good but they talk very good like you know and you see in like few years like one year they become like on the top like you know they become world champions of ufc because they sell themselves and it's all about mar- professionalism professional martial arts all about selling yourself and showing people like you know they care about you so tell them like who you are you know everyone is fighting like every like you see every week there are a like, bunch of fights nobody cares about fights if you are like uh really like you you have marketing skills you know you show people like what you are and they care about you they study you then they and for uh, like all of my fights oh sorry if you like all of my fights there are like uh, uh, crypto influencers and they are like now invest like uh, betting on every fighters so my last fight was like 97 i, I was the favorite of 97% and my opponent was like underdog for 7% you know so it's all about like people know about you know how so if they know about you then they can like invest on you they, then they can bet on you you know so they care about you yeah so it's all about like market yeah uh, i wanted to ask you that tommy azuz fight that went a bit like of course that was a very like good fight and uh, you were able to like get that victory it was it was like a very fun fight in that sense something happened at the end like there was a bit of a brawl or whatever why did that start i mean we saw the video everyone saw what happened they saw like tommy throwing things in his corner as well but why did that happen from your perspective if anybody's gotten a chance to ask you i am really curious because that lives rent free in my head why did that whole yeah. thing happen <laughs> bro that fight was in miami i have a lot of fans in miami so when i was fighting in miami the arena was packed from pakistani people you know there were everywhere pakistani flags like it was crazy everyone was like shocked how 
like it was a lot of people like you know the arena was full of people when i when i was on backstage they announced like shazib is next so everyone got crazy like they were yelling, you know they were screaming so uh and my my fans they were like close to uh, tommy azus corner you know so there was a guy he was like uh he uh, 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 googled the uh, a french language my opponent was french so he googled the french language basuda like trash you know so then he was telling him <laughs> in french so everyone was everyone of uh, pakistani like my fans they were talking in uh, french they were telling him trash you know? so he got pissed off so yeah and he was like i was beating him like very bad and he got pissed off like, he, ca- he can't do anything in the pit and then he saw like his coach everyone was like yelling at him everyone was like yelling screaming for me so that's why they started throwing chairs you know in the crowd yeah i saw the pakistani flags in the crowd now it's just like wow that is beautiful to see miami you know it's a karate combat event shahzeeb prince fighting the pakistanis come out to support uh um, you know it's it was beautiful that is really yeah, there were a lot of people yeah there were a lot of people uh, in my miami card it was like full the arena was full of like uh, everyone know like The, uh, the workers the security everyone know like oh shahzeeb is fighting so that's why you know they were like oh that's why the arena is full so it was like huge so i, I didn't expect a lot of people but i don't know how they know me and they like you know came for me and thank you uh, for coming everyone you know so it it gives me a lot of motivation to push through I, i'm expecting a very big crowd of pakistanis at the dubai event as well i'm expecting them to turn up because this is turning out to be like one of like again salman khan is hosting i can't stop thinking about that because it's again just the scale of this event just not just from that perspective but just from the perspective of the fights him being there it's just all so grand and it's also big and it's going to be so important for pakistani mma that we're getting this you know uh spotlight but in terms of like rana as an opponent rana as somebody of course is coming in from india to fight you do you respect him do you like him as a person like do you feel as if he's somebody who how, how do you feel about him on 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 that level from what you've seen and interacted with him and how he talks and even some comments he was leaving under uh, one of the posts like what do you think of rana ruda bro i never disrespect someone's country you know when we uh, agreed to you know fight him he started like commenting bad about pakistan like you know Uh, so it's fight about between us like you know you, you can talk bad sh- like shit about me but you can't uh, shit uh, talk shit about my country you know so that's why i don't respect him uh, he's like such a dull guy you know he doesn't know anything he's just like idiot stupid you know he just talks bad about country in country there are a lot of people like we have like i'm not the only only person in pakistan we have a lot of people in india i respect india a lot they i have a lot of fans from india i respect them i don't talk shit about india you know i talk sh- shit about him i will roast him i do everything on him but i i will never talk shit about his country so this is bad and he's going to face me like he's going to he is ma- he make me angry so you will see it in the pit if you make me angry then you you are gone Yeah, I, when I saw those comments I was like I was really hoping Rana would take the high road and just you know be respectful about it because Shahzeb Brins is not the guy to you know trash talk or try to like it's usually you who's trying to get in the opponent's head in a lot of ways. Yeah. But he's scared, you know. He is scared. That's why he's, he wants to be famous like he, he wants my fans to you know go follow him. That's why he was he's talking shit. He knows he can't do anything in the pit, you know. he's going to be knocked out in like early so for me i i'm going to smash him in the pit i will you know show him his like his haqat you know in urdu so i i will show him his haqat so he will never talk shit about my country again i love that i love to hear that and you said last fight you were 97% favorite the other guy was 3% what do you think the percentage should be for this fight in terms of who's the favorite and who's the underdog yeah i have a lot of like if now karate combat is doing one more thing it's like interesting they have coin they have karate combat on token you know you buy the token and then you bet on your favorite fighters so they have tokens like uh, uh, and f- uh, that's how they you know uh, in karate combat if you use your tokens they will be double like you know if you bet on someone it will be double so a lot of like influence are crypto influence big big guys they have big names and they're into crypto like you know they're celebrities in crypto so they were all everyone uh, they know me everyone know me when i get into the pitch they they like you know they know just only one guy 
in all of the fight they they don't care about me anyway they don't care about anyone they just like all like invite all their tokens on me and they make a lot of money last time i was 97 percent favorite and it's like in karate combat street i'm the most favorite person you know and he was most underdog in the karate combat history so i think it's gonna be same this time too maybe 98 percent maybe 99 who knows yeah i said because nobody knows this time wala this chai wala yeah that's a good <laughs> that's a good throwback that is a very good throwback to one of the on the mic episodes when rana and uh, memosh got into it um and rana has been trying to fight a pakistani guy for very long shazeb i think you know this rana and memosh were supposed to fight in brave memosh called him out he called memosh out didn't happen then brave tried giving shoaib use of that fight instead that fight didn't happen either uh, then he fought guliev instead now he's finally getting his wish he's finally getting a pakistani opponent rana has been asking for it why do you think he, he wants he, he prayed he prayed for uh, you know wrong thing he's uh, he prayed for wrong thing he, i think after this fight he will go back and you know uh, like say oh what what i i pray you know so he he, he pray, he's with the, he's matching with the wrong people now like pakistan pakistani fighters are good you know he doesn't know like he never fought pakistani fighter so if now if he fought me then after that i think his career will be finished he will never fight again and do you think the experience edge that rana might have because i feel like he might have been doing at least mma i know you come from wushu background this is a more striking heavy promotion but like you said the rule set has kind of altered does the experience factor in any way worry you does anything about rana rudra worry you ahead of this fight no nothing worries about me i'm prepared for everything like you know from every angle in our gym we train like uh, crazy like experience level i have a lot of experience if you take my uh, history like background i wushu fights like a lot of international fights and uh, national championships and now i'm here like uh, since i came to my uh, like america we have been sparring like three three times a week so i've been f- sparring for lo- so long I- and i've been training with uh, ufc champions like uh, last time I was in uh I was cornering my friend uh, Francisco you know Brian Ortega he's like top top 10 in UFC so I sparred with him he he trained with me and he said you are good and he told me like he's he will come back to our gym he will train with us so you know there are levels to this game so I know my level my level is not the same now I'm like different level you know I've been training on every aspect I'm not just like I'm not just guy that uh, sit and pray I'm not doing this I train and then I pray, you know. So I've been training for this very long. That is actually very good saying. That's something you should uh, actually put on a wall or something. Like I don't, you know, sit and pray. I train and pray. Like that is that is actually really cool. Um, but one thing, like last time we spoke, of course, karate combat. That was before I believe the Tommy Azuz fight. And then you went on a complete tear, fighting bare knuckle. Two more fights in karate combat. Now this. Uh, has the goal kind of shifted in a way do you feel like getting into the ufc is something which you now think about regularly that is something that you want to do because i know before this it was a lot of you know striking heavy focus but clearly you are very good at that mma thing as well you know based on that one fight and based on what you've been telling us as well about how you're training at goat shed and what the priorities at goat shed every aspect of the game is the ufc the goal now for shah zebra oh uh, no not now before it was the ufc my goal now my goal is to become a karate uh, combat world champion you know first i will become the karate combat world champion ufc is like i can go there i know like i can go there i have a lot of connection in ufc i know a lot of guys i know i i, I have a lot of fighters like as as i said brian ortega he is like top uh, five i think he's top three now he 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 trained with me he knows like you know and we have a lot of more fighters like coming to our gym all are like uh, good fighters so everyone knows like you know our level so i think it's not a big deal to go in ufc but for now my goal is to be karate world champion then i will see you know then we'll see uh, what happens next yeah i mean talk about connections it was crazy to see you with platinum mike perry like uh, just you know and i think he's he's a regular at the go chat as well after your fight he was there uh, i know gsp has been commentating these fights as well have you ever had any interactions with someone like gsp and has he ever given you any feedback or anything along those lines yeah yeah gsp he came uh, he's coming to uh, in dubai fights he's coming to dubai fight gsp he knows me he is like uh, when you see like he's commenting on my fight he he, he talks like very good you know uh, boss rutan he's like super super good he's big fan of me like, you know he said uh, now you are my favorite fighter mike the uh, 
uh, friend of uh, what do you say the boxer i forgot his name the big boss oh uh, yeah YouTuber. yeah yeah uh, logan paul's friend mike mike michellek or something like yeah, that yeah yeah, yeah. Lo- lo- yeah. Yeah, Logan. Yeah, he he is there. He say like I'm the, I'm his favorite fighter. So you know, everyone like they give me a lot of like good things. Like you know, they give me a lot of good tips. I take their tips, and I'm their favorite fighter. Now I'm everyone's favorite fighter. So there's something you know, something that's why I become fire. Nobody can become like you know some someone's favorite. So there is something you know. So it's good. Yeah. Hundred uh, percent, and and I'm again really thankful for the time you've given us. I'll take like maybe five more minutes if that's okay. Uh, but like Shazay, we go back to the Sasha Moiza fight one one Warrior Series ten, I believe, uh, right before COVID. Yeah. I, and I remember seeing that fight, and even in that fight, if you watch that fight, you can tell you are a phenomenal world class talent. You are somebody who has so much athletic acumen, who somebody who has such, uh, you know, precision in what he's doing and such intent and such like, uh, it's, it's beautiful to watch you fight even in that fight. But of course, it's miles apart now compared to how you are as a fighter now and how you are in your life now as well. Uh, and again, the intro I gave for this podcast as well is kind of to paint that picture. What is life like now do you ever think back to that time where i remember you saying that i feel like quitting i feel like i feel like stopping to fight i don't want to fight anymore because there's no opportunity everything in pakistan which it is is corrupt it is completely rigged against the fighters it is not promoting any sports it is all going downhill money's being wasted money's being eaten money's being stolen everything's bad in pakistan compare these two now what would you say about your journey as a fighter as a pakistani fighter going through all of that and now alhamdulillah being in the position that you are now but how do you look back at all of that and think about that yeah when uh, when i was fighting in uh, one warrior series at that time i got the like fight in three three weeks notice you know and i i had no coaches there like i was training my own i was watching youtube videos training by my own self you know so there are labels to game he was like in training camp you know he was he's like a world lightweight champion he was very good but uh, i take i take the fight I, i i had to fight you know in pakistan there were there's nothing like opportunities nobody supports you if you make something everyone is like ready to steal from you you know so it's like very bad thing so when i look back i say thank god i'm here you know i i will say every fighter every pakistani fighter to move from pakistan because in pakistan you waste your talent you know uh so they they don't have any like you know they don't support you if you become something then they start supporting you and then they start telling like you know i i i been supporting this guy so it was like a hard journey for me and because uh, because of that i learned a lot of things you know uh, i got through like hard work i know about everything so now i'm here i know like uh, i'm i'm lucky god gave me something you know so alhamdulillah for everything uh that's why i'm, I'm very happy and i'm always down to like you know down to earth person i'm always always pray f- uh, from the god and now my goal is to you know work on the other athletes to get them here you know because in pakistan i i've seen a lot of fighters a lot of good fighters when i came into the sport they were like good good fighter i was looking for them looking on them you know i was learning from them now i see nobody knows them you know they are just being wasted their talent is wasted nobody knows them they never fought in any league in pakistan if you are in pakistan there is like one fight in in all year you know and it's not like nothing compared to america you know in here like if you do something like if you do small thing everyone comes you to you like you know they give you appreciation they love you in pakistan you do like a lot of things and they, you you have your own friends like your own gym member they talk shit about you know on your back so it it hurts a lot when i was fighting in uh, i lost there were a lot of guys from my own gym you know they were talking shit like you know he is not good that that you know blah blah so they were talking a lot of things so it it hurts you know now i see i see my partners here training partners here i do something like small thing they come to me like appreciate me every like you know every like small thing they come appreciate you so the, uh, here they have a lot of appreciation appreciation you know and they support their talent like uh, talent a lot now i'm from pakistan i'm not from america you know but still they they are like supporting me like their own family they give me everything like you know whatever i need i need massage therapy everything i just tell them like you know i need this thing and next day it's like done so it's like different that's how you become champion if you take like ufc fighters ufc is like uh, treating them like the children you know 
they have everything UFC is giving them nutrition everything like you know uh, they don't need to worry about anything they don't need to do like work you know in Pakistan we have to like work we have to work and feed our family and then go back to training it's not gonna happen like this you have to like you know focus on one thing you have to like uh, if you want to be a champion you know you, if you want to be a, a great if you don't want to waste your time then you have to like work like that you know like professional professional is not like it's not a joke it's not like part-time job it's like complete job you have to do a lot of things it's not just like you are training like it's good you just do uh, striking that's good your body needs recovery your body needs massage your body needs like doctors you know they give you something your body like you have to recover good you know you have to like a lot of things this, this is not just one small thing it is a lot of things when i came to here my eyes are open like you know now i see oh this is like different you know everything is different and the training aspect in pakistan training was like very different we we have been wasting our time like uh, if i i see back like you know i have been wasting my uh, like all career i should have come here like early now here is uh, training is different you have a lot of techniques a lot of things like, it's just different thing training wise what is different like is it and like are we emphasizing on the wrong things in pakistan is the mindset different or is it just yeah, in pakistan yeah in pakistan we are like just uh, working on weight loss you know we are jumping we are like doing bullshit things we are just like warm up for one hour we we do like one hour only warm up and here we don't do warm up we just come like 5 minutes then we start like straight to the technique straight to the technique and more like we are fighters i suppose we are fighters you have to like spar more you know the more you spar the more your eyes open you have to like do the techniques you have to do like uh, one hour you have to do the complete techniques you have to learn new skills in pakistan we are we have one thing and we use them like every time every time like you know so it's like completely different so who are some of the fighters that you think are maybe you know in your eyes getting wasted in pakistan or or fighters you think you know really need to if if you look at you know like of course um not the guys on this card but otherwise as well like who do you think are guys who really should get that opportunity would you have any names in mind like that yeah there are a lot of pakistani fighters there are very good fighters you know now now i'm happy pakistan is like uh, like you guys are doing something ift like you know a lot of events before i was there there was nothing like you know there was like only one even now it's good now they are in good hands now i'm happy for them like you know they have a lot of fighters like abdullah chandio is very good uh, mahmoud shaza i i talked with both of guys uh, for this card you know but it, it it didn't work out well but they are good and there are lot of more fighters like very good names you know they are good and now i'm happy like in pakistan we have a lot of leaks it's like they are doing a lot of leaks so players are like they have something you know at least they they are fighting so this is good yeah sorry one of the last things i'll ask and then we can wrap up what are some of the things that you do notice about happen like a fighters aside you mentioned their leagues now of course there's IFT there's others as well uh, what what have you been have you been paying attention do you have any time to look at what's happening within pakistan do you keep up with like what's happening or or do you like how do you look at all that because again it's it's an entire like landscape of people who are now do, like you said doing work and making things happen so what do you notice in all that yeah i've been noticing everything like you know i have seen like last your last event like it was in pakistan uh there were a lot, very good fighters in it like you know it's like different i see the cage and see the lights it it looks like professional you know it looks like uh, same in america so everything is good like i'm happy like you know uh, looking from here uh, now pakistan is going like through some track you know before it was like stop like there was nothing now uh, it will improve like you know in the first you can't like improve but you learn a lot of things in the first event you learn something in the next you learn more things you know then you then you bring like outside fighters like from uh, outside of like you know countries so that's how it's it will grow up you know so this is good start very good start i'm very happy definitely and chazeb i mean just to kind of wrap up any parting notes any messages that you might have to the people watching to uh, rana as well to the people of pakistani mma like anything you want to get off your chest something that you would really say yeah this is something which i want to get across ye baat main kya kya jana chahta hu to anyone like what would that message be looking into the camera uh, yeah my, my message is for uh, our youngsters you know keep uh, dreaming you know don't give up on your dreams 
if you dream, then you achieve something. So keep dreaming and set your goals and try to achieve, uh, you know, set different uh, goals to achieve, uh, achieve these goals. So you will get there, you know, one day, inshallah. In the beginning, you will feel like, you know, uh, it's not going to happen. Like, you know, sometimes there will be dark times. Sometimes there will be good times. But keep doing it. Uh, keep doing it. And one day you will get your goals. And uh, if I may... One. There's one more, yeah, there's one more, my sponsor, I want to talk about it, like, so now I've been uh, improving my training with, there is an application, Cryo, so I've been training uh, on that application, it gives you a lot of, like, you know, it has a coaches, personal coaches, so you can choose your own goals, like, you, you can choose your own training equipments, and it's good for me, like, sometimes when, I, when I'm outside, I don't have my coaches with me, so I... Uh, set up my Kayo, I open my application and start working out. So it's good. Oh yeah, I did see that on your story actually about Cryo. And and I mean, if you're endorsing it, it has to be a very good product. So you guys do check out Cryo to support Shazeb Kingrin, to support this guy. And, you know, of course, sponsors are would make this entire industry go around. So thank you, Cryo, for supporting our champion. Shazeb, last thing that I will ask of you, I promise, but I'll give you a What is your message to Rana Rudra ahead of this fight as we close this podcast? Podcast, please let us know. Abhi ho chai wale, tayar rehna 20 tarikh ko. Tune jo hai bure bande se panga liya hai. Pakistan ka naam tune liya hai. Ab jo hai isko tumhe bukatna padega pit ke andar. Let's go, let's go. That is intense. I have goosebumps. Shahzeb Kingrin, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck. You don't need it. You are a champion. We have full faith in you. All of Pakistan, needless to say, is behind you. And please, everyone watching this video. Like, share, subscribe, comment, do all of that good stuff. You already know who Shazay Brin is, but if you don't, for some reason, go follow him on Instagram. Follow Goat Shed, Karate Combat, Asim Zaidi, the whole team that's making sure this revolution is taking place in Pakistani MMA. And just, ye sab nahi karna, koi baat nahi. one thing that I just need you to do, Tune in Karate Combat 45 and watch Shazay Brind do work and raise the Pakistani flag high in the most high stakes Pakistan-India fight ever. Thank you for watching the weigh-in. Until next time, keep it tight.